So before we start today's vlog, I just wanted to give a big thank you to everybody who subscribed to our channel over the last two years. We've gone over the 10,000 subscribers mark. This is a real milestone for us. It was so exciting to wake up and see that we've got 10K following our journey here at Tappanoff Farm. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoy today's vlog. Good morning folks, welcome to another farm vlog at Tappanoff Farm in Aberdeenshire, North East Scotland. We've got the geese in Alder Coppice, which is a small area of wood fuel coppice. We brought the geese up here yesterday. They had completed a rotation of grazing through our Westfield silver pasture and we needed to put them somewhere with some fresh grass. And there's plenty here in this area of wood fuel coppice. These are all the trees which were planted two years ago um, in this very wet area of the farm to grow on and to be a source of wood fuel. And the geese are often in this area, it's very good for them. We can't obviously bring in the goats or the sheep to graze this grass down. So the geese are just the perfect size and type of livestock to bring into a delicate system like this one. They've been in here three times this year already, grazing between these young trees. With the copious amounts of manure that the geese provide, the grass grows back very green and lush. Um, so that's why we've been able to graze it so well. So they're in here again, help control the grass growth and obviously give them something good to eat. We're really hoping that next year we'll get some goslings. The last couple of years, We've had a mother goose sitting on eggs, but unfortunately they've either never hatched or they've been robbed by predators such as badgers and pine marten. So I think if we want to get... Oh, Oren. Oren loves to torment the geese. He wouldn't be so brave if there wasn't an electric net between them and him. But yeah, I think if we want to get goslings, we're going to have to do the incubation ourselves just to keep them safe from those predators. It was amazing to see pine marten coming into the, onto the farm, um, but a shame also to see the eggs getting taken from underneath the goose. Luckily the geese were never attacked. So yeah, just giving them some fresh water, making sure they're all right. So today we're going to be mostly in the market garden. Um, I think we're going to begin the many weeks of getting the veg garden ready for winter. Um, so yeah, just a general tidy up. It just really pays off to get going in the garden at this time of year, as soon as the beds are free of crops, um, to start getting them ready for winter. Get any amendments, compost, etc., applied, and then we'll cover them up either with a natural mulch or with um, the plastic tarps that we use. And then next year, next spring, they'll be 
they'll be ready to go uh, to get planting again. We're already getting excited for next spring. We need to get the goats out the byre today. It's not been the best of weather recently, so they've been in the byre quite a bit. But we've got a cell ready to take them into today, just here, behind the goat shed. So directly behind the goat shed, we have this small example of silver pasture, which is the integration of useful tree species within grazing. So here we have some grazing cells um, intersected by rows of productive trees. These are poplar, alder, hazel, all great species for fodder for the goats or for cutting and drying as tree hay. Check out our tree hay video. They were grazing in this cell behind me just a few days ago. It's a very small area, even just for our three goats, so they've exhausted that quite quickly. So last night we set up a new cell, ready for this morning to bring them into. That was simple enough. Put the goats into this small grazing cell, which they'll be here for just a day, maybe two, depending on if it rains later on, we have to take them in. It's perfect grazing, or I should say browsing really for the goats. There's some small coppice trees in there, which we're happy for them to chew away on. This, the cell next door was similar. We've got some willow and some birch that have regenerated, and we're happy for them to be chewed on and enjoyed by the goats and plenty of docks and thistles perfect for hardy ruminants i've also put a few uh, branches from these alders in just to give them something else to enjoy really easy using this um, smart fence from gallagher four strands on a reel it's not hot right now but it will be once we switched it on we like this for the goats and the sheep because we can get that this bottom strand nice and high off the ground, um, so less chances of it earthing with any foliage that's around, any leaves and branches that might be touching the ground with the net, that's very difficult. So we're gonna start using this a lot more for the goats and the sheep rather than the netting. So just gotta go and get the battery and put that on so that uh, they don't get out because we really don't want them to get out here because uh, this is quite a delicate area. We've got these young, obviously these young trees, which were growing as a fodder tree for the goats, but just above them is the new area of forest garden. And uh, we had one escape back in the summer, which was quite devastating for some of the new fruit trees there. We don't want a repeat of that. <laughs> Love it when you find something you don't expect on your own farm. I was just walking past the tomato tunnel after getting the goats in the cell and uh, these beautiful hop cones caught my eye. So um, we, we planted a hop in this polytunnel years ago and over the last few years we've actually pulled most of it out so that it didn't strangle out any tomatoes or other crops that we were growing in this tunnel. But obviously a part of it has survived and is growing outside of the tunnel now. Um, working its way up this willow tree that I've got behind me and um, quite a few nice flowers on here. We've got some hops growing outside in the forest garden but they never produce very big cones. Whereas this one, they're a little bit small but not bad for growing outside in quite a harsh year up here in Scotland. But yeah, really beautiful to see it working its way up 
this pollarded willow. Fantastic to see that, the vertical space being used very well. We're very excited to try and establish more climbing species in our forest garden areas. Hops being obviously a, a good one that we can use. Great for home brewing and medicinal uses as well. Make my way through the original area of forest garden on my way to the market garden to get on with some work. There's some fruit coming on this medlar, quite a young medlar tree. Haven't got much experience with medlar, so very excited to see that we've got some fruits on this tree which we planted a couple of years ago. We've been picking a lot of fruit over the last month or so all the apples and plums and damsons, the aronia berry. We've still got some apples on the trees. Uh, mostly this variety, which is Ellison's Orange. It ripens a bit later up here, but uh, yeah, coming off nice and easily. So we'll be picking these in the next few days. They've done really well. Aronia Berry, starting to get some lovely autumnal colours now. Uh, they've all been picked and eaten. We've got this damson here, really heavily laden, um, which we've been picking some, but definitely got to get quite a few more. It's a very productive tree, the damson. This is a variety called Farley. Um, and the fruits on this one are almost sweet enough to eat um, without cooking. Often damson is just thought of really as a cooker. All right, so I'm here in the market garden and as well as getting on with some of the jobs involved in getting the beds ready for winter, I've been wanting to come in here and dig up some comfrey that we've got growing in a dedicated bed. We've been wanting to plant the comfrey in the new areas of forest garden and the forest garden tree rows that we've got here in the market garden. So this is a 15 meter long bed of Russian comfrey, or Bocking 14, and I planted this here in 2016 when we established the market garden. Planted it really just as a way of breaking up the plots. We're in plot one right now, which is made up of 20 beds, 21 actually, including this comfrey bed. And of course, there are many other reasons that we wanted to have this bed of comfrey in the garden. I just wouldn't have a garden without comfrey in it. If you've been on any of the farm tours here or have got the right kind of eyes when you're watching these vlogs, you'll see that the comfrey is absolutely everywhere. We've got it planted in the forest gardens around our fruit trees. We've got it edging pathways. We've got it dotted around absolutely everywhere because it's such a valuable plant to us. And you can see it's got these beautiful flowers which are still flowering even at this time of year. These are great for attracting bees into a garden. It's got massive leaves which are fantastic for making plant food fertilizers from. We regularly steep these leaves in buckets of water to ferment and create a liquid fertilizer very high in potassium, but also nitrogen and everything else that plants need to get growing and fruiting. We harvest it regularly uh, for the goats to eat and the chickens. The ducks loved eating it when we had them, but Rosa often comes in here at the end of the day with a scythe and mows a section down and takes armfuls of it over to the goats for an evening snack. Very high in protein, so it makes a fantastic animal feed. Its old folk name is Knitbone uh, because it was believed to have the power to be able to fuse together broken bones and it is actually a cell regenerative. It speeds up the formation of cells um, and so is a very valuable healing plant. Great for bruises and sprains. Do your research first guys, we're not medicinal herbalists but from a home, home herbal point of view we value this plant immensely. The other great thing about comfrey and the main reason we're going to be moving it and using it today is that it's classed as a dynamic accumulator. And what that means is it has incredibly long tap roots up to several meters long at times. And these roots can access different minerals and nutrients from the soil and then make them available to trees and shrubs that we've planted the comfrey nearby to as the comfrey's leaves die down in autumn. It's a perennial, so they die down every year. As the leaf dies and drops in autumn, those nutrients are made available to trees and shrubs that the comfrey is growing around about. It's also a fantastic living mulch. If you look at the size of it and the shade that these leaves produce, 
it makes it very difficult for any weeds and grasses to grow um, wherever we've planted some comfrey. So a really beneficial plant for us. This bed, as I said, has been here since 2016. But what we want to do is start to reduce the amount of comfrey that we've got here. Um, it's time for us to add some comfrey plants into the new areas of forest garden that we've been establishing this year. And I want to do it now just while we can still sort of identify it before it goes too dormant. And hopefully it will have a month or so to just kind of settle into its new place before it goes fully dormant for winter. And in spring it should burst up through the ground and start growing where we've put it in its new position. It's very easy to dig up and divide. You really can't do this plant much damage. And saying that it's very hard to get rid of comfrey. Uh, this variety of comfrey is actually sterile so it doesn't set seed which is great because um, you don't really want it spreading around the garden too much. But Wherever you've had it growing, if there's any little pieces of root left in the ground, it will establish again. So the idea of us being able to clear this bed is probably not going to be that likely, but we're going to give it a go. But we've got a lot of very healthy plants here, which we can now get a spade and divide these up and plant them around our new areas of forest garden. And the first place we're going to do that is in a new forest garden tree row that we've got at the top of plot one here in the market garden. Um, if you look back a few vlogs, to one called Mad for the Mulch. You'll see us um, mulching this area of fruit trees. The mulching has done very well. You'll see there's only just a few docks pushing up through where we maybe didn't layer the cardboard thick enough. All right, so I'm gonna go and get myself a spade and a wheelbarrow, and then we'll start digging up the comfrey. <laughs> This first plant came up very easily. You can just see some of the thickness of the roots here. Check this out. That's how thick we're talking about. Sometimes thicker than that. All of the comfrey that we've got growing around the farm, we've, we've literally got hundreds of plants growing, have all come from either divided plants, but on the whole actually from root cuttings. And we would very simply just take a piece of root like this, put that in the ground, put it in a pot, whatever you want to do and it will regenerate very quickly and start growing a plant. It's a very successful plant, it's comfrey. We could pot some of these up if we want, um, add them to our nursery stock, but an easier job for today is I'm gonna take a plant like this size and I'm gonna divide that up with the spade into two or four plants and put them in the ground. I'm gonna get a few more of those. soil is absolutely fantastic around these plants. We've had six years of these growing up in spring, producing huge amounts of roots, dying down in the autumn every year. And the soil is incredibly loose, dark, full of worms, little spiders, absolutely full of life. Um, this looks like tilled soil. It just really shows you how great perennial plants can be for soil. But look at all the roots that are breaking off as I dig these plants out. Just showing you how these guys are going to be around for a long time, I think. I might as well keep actually these, these roots and maybe we will pot some up. We're going to be developing a tree and plant nursery here at Tap Farm. So these will be a nice little addition to some of the stock. So that might seem a bit brutal, chopping these guys up like I was, but they really can handle that. And this division of roots will grow on fine as long as we get that planted now. As you can see, just from digging up two established plants, we've got 
a lot of future plants here. We've got a lot of plant material, root cuttings, divisions. We're going to be taking these leaves. We can just mulch with these around the fruit trees where we're going to be planting these plants. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to take those up now and get them in the ground. If you're not familiar with forest garden tree rows, please check out the link to the video above. That will give you an idea of the design and the reason we're planting these rows of mixed fruit trees. So I'm going to start by planting the comfrey um, where the wood chip meets the grass pathways there, just to act as a bit of a grass and weed barrier, just to stop the grass encroaching into the fruit trees. Then I'm going to plant two comfrey plants between each fruit tree. And then you never know, I might just bung in a few more for good measure. So to get the comfrey in the ground, I'm just going to dig through this wood chip mulch with my hands until I find the cardboard that we've put down as a weed suppressant layer. Then I'm going to use the spade to dig a hole through the cardboard into the soil and get the comfrey planted. Great, I've only got a few more meters to go, maybe planting another six or eight divisions of comfrey around the fruit trees in this forest garden tree row. That's great stuff, looking forward to spring next year when these powerful strong plants will push through the mulch and start to take over this area, reducing weed pressure, mining fertility for the fruit trees that we've planted them around, attracting beneficial insects with their beautiful flowers, producing great amounts of fodder to feed the goats, helping us produce medicine for the house to help relieve aches and pains that we get as gardeners, and just bringing, certainly bringing a lot of abundance into this garden. So as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog. If you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe. Joining along with the over 10,000 subscribers that we've got now, thank you so much to everyone who has supported us over these last few years to get us above 10,000 subscribers. That's a real milestone for us. So give the video a like, share it on your social media, tell your friends about our channel, and until next time, we'll see you soon. See ya.